So I'm just briefly going to go over some of the issues to do with temporal discounting. So this isn't meant to be a summary of the entire area. This is just looking at how to understand the graphs and how to understand um, the discount rates and the curves because it can be a bit confusing first of all. So the main idea in temporal choice or intertemporal uh, choices is basically that we might have um, an option A or B and these options might have different uh, utility or different values associated with them but importantly um, they might occur at different points in time you know so normally what we're talking about is do you want to choose between um, an immediate reward or a, a reward fairly soon which is kind of small or do you want to wait an extra amount of time in order to get a bigger reward and there are plenty of examples like this so there's one, imagine you're um, driving along the motorway you're really really um, hungry you might uh, see a sign that says uh, I don't know, McDonald's in five miles well that's going to give you some value because you're hungry but it's not going to give you a lot of value because it's McDonald's um, the other option might be well you might only be 20 miles from uh, home and there you might have a, um, a great big dinner already prepared that you can just microwave or something like that so you might have more value from that but you've got to wait a little bit extra so the question is do you do it? So start right from the beginning let's take um, let's explain this graph so along here we have time and imagine um, initially we're right here and this is off into the future so what we might have is um, a bit of a wait to get a reward that has um, a certain value But what we could do is wait an extra amount of time and maybe get a bigger reward. So here we go. We've got um, this extra wait. But if we do that, if we wait some more time, we'll get increased value. Now, so far, we've basically been talking about value as something that doesn't really change. Um, 100 pounds has 100 pounds of value. 200 pounds has 200 pounds worth of value. Now, that might go through the utility function. That might have different amounts of utility, but the idea was that it was still a fixed number. It didn't change. Now, that's kind of what's demonstrated here. This has a certain amount of value, and these lines represent this constant fixed amount of value. Now, from going off of what we know at the moment, you would choose the thing which gives you the highest value or the highest utility. So in this example, what you do is you'd go for this option. You'd wait the extra amount of time for the high reward, because you like rewards, they're good. Another important thing about this is that you will always pick the higher reward in this example. Even, um, that might be slightly strange, let's consider an example where the extra time you have to wait is 50 years, but the extra value you get is one pound. I don't think I'm going to wait an extra 50 years to get um, 101 pounds rather than just wait one minute and get 100 pounds so this is a bit weird it's also a bit weird because the value of something does change over time if you were to if I was stuck in a desert and I was really really thirsty the value of a bottle of water right now is very very high but the value of a bottle of water tomorrow is going to be very very low because I might be dead by tomorrow so the idea that the value is constant and doesn't change over time is a bit 
iffy. So this leads us to basically the normative optimal model that we got from economics. And I'll just describe it 